Guys, my name is Ankush Kaurav and I welcome you to Gone To series. In the previous tutorial, I talked about request param annotation along with showing you the various ways of using it in a controller class. I also talked about how to create and handle HTML forms in a Spring MVC web application. Now in this tutorial, I'll talk about one more important annotation which is provided by Spring MVC and that is model attribute annotation. On a whole, if I talk about, you can use this annotation on a method as well as on a method argument. I'll cover everything, but before that, let's check upon some of the fundamental concepts which are needed to understand this concept. Guys, to explain all these new concepts to you, I'll use this demo, which I developed step by step along with you in the previous tutorial all right so let's start here in this demo i would want you to observe a very important point in this request handler method i'm setting the string object message with this value and the point to notice in the corresponding gsp file that is admission success.gsp file i'm retrieving this value by simply referring to its name this is the wonderful feature which is provided by Spring Embassy. So the idea is very clear. If I'm creating some object in this request handler method and I want to access that object in the JSP file, then what I need to do, I would simply need to add that object to the model and view object using its add object method. If I do that, then I can simply access that object in the JSP file by simply referring to its name. Here I showed you this feature using a string object. Let me quickly show you this feature working with the user defined object student and consequently I would explain everything about the model attribute annotation and its working. All right. So what I'll do, I'll first include a student class in the project. Just to save some time, I've already included this class in the project. The student class is having two properties in it, student name and student hobby, along with other getters and setters methods. Let me make all those required changes in the request handler method here in this controller class and the corresponding JSP file that is admission success.jsp file. And then I'll explain all those modifications and related concepts to you. All right, so here I've modified the request handler method with this code. Now let's modify the admission success.jsp file also. Cool. So now all modifications I have made here. Now let's understand what I've done in this JSP file and the corresponding request handler method here. It's a very simple change which I've made here in this request handler method. Let's go through it. Here I'm first creating the student object with the values name and hobby, which I'm retrieving from the form which user would submit. And then I'm adding the student object to the model and view object with this statement. There's one more object I'm adding to the model and view that is the value of header message string object with this value that is gone to College of Engineering India. And in the corresponding admission success.jsp file, I'm simply retrieving both these objects that is header message string object and student object. How? Using this HTML code. I'm first retrieving the value of header message and then I'm retrieving the value of student object with this code. All right, now let's check this application running on the browser with all these modifications. And then I'll talk about the most important concept for which I'm laying all these foundations. Enter this URL on the browser, click enter. My application has sent this form, fill up the form with the values submit the form cool my application has sent this as a response back 
Gone to College of Engineering India is the value of header message string object. And Mr. ABC XYZ and music are the values of student object, which I set here in the request handler method and accessed in the admission success.csp file. Guys, now I'm going to talk about a very important concept and I would need a little more attention of yours to understand it. Here in this request handler method, I'm doing two important things. First is I'm writing code for binding the request parameters values with the corresponding properties of the user defined object student with this code. And the second important thing which I'm doing here is I'm adding the user defined object that is student object to the model and view object using model and views add object method like this. Spring MVC says this is the right way of doing things for a requirement like this. But I give you an option for writing less code and do more things with the help of model attribute annotation. All right, let me tell you what exactly I'm talking about here. Here, I'm first extracting request parameters using request param annotation. Then I'm creating student object. Then I'm binding request parameters values with the corresponding properties of the student object. And then I'm including student object into the model and view object using its add object method. Lot of steps I'm doing here. Spring MC says, if you replace this line with simple this line, that is, I would use model attribute annotation on the method argument like this on student object this way. Then I really don't need to write code for creating the student object. I don't need to write code for binding individual request parameters values with the corresponding properties of student object. Also, I don't need to write this last line where I'm adding student object to the model and view object. Isn't it good feature which Spring MSC provides? You just write code like this. That is, you just use model attribute annotation on a student object and then you really don't need to write explicitly code for binding request parameters with the corresponding properties of student object. And also, you really don't need to write code explicitly for putting student object to the model and view object. So using model attribute annotation on a method argument like this, I'm kind of doing more things with less code. If you don't want to use model attribute annotation for a requirement like this, then you have to explicitly write code yourself like I showed you before using model attribute annotation. Ideally, with this change, my application behavior would not change. If I run this application on the browser, it would behave in the same way as it was behaving before including model attribute annotation. Let's see it running on the browser. All right, put all the values. Click on submit button. Cool, my application responded in the same way as it was behaving before including model attribute annotation. Guys, I would want to make a very important point here when you use model attribute annotation on a method argument like this. When I use model attribute annotation on student object, then what's my expectation? My expectation is very clear. I would want Spring MVC to extract all request parameters and then bind all request parameters with the corresponding properties of student object. Now, when I say corresponding property of request parameter in the student object, what do I really mean? I simply mean Spring MVC would map student name request parameter with student name property of student object. Spring MVC would map student hobby request parameter with the corresponding property of student that is student hobby. You have to be a little careful while giving names to the properties of student object. Whatever name you give here for the student object properties, you have to have same name listed in the form that is for request parameters. I hope you got the point. 
Guys, in this tutorial, my main aim was to introduce you with the model attribute annotation by showing you why and how we use it on a method argument. In the next tutorial, we'll learn how to use it at a method level. And also, we'll talk about more advanced concepts related to this annotation. Guys, a big thank you for liking my tutorials on Spring MVC series. Your continuous interaction with me on this series is making me upload more and more tutorials. So please keep them up by commenting or providing feedback in the form of emails or simply by commenting below the video. If you have any queries, please send me all those on this ID or simply put them below the video in the comments section. Please like the video if you really liked it and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Contour Series and I'm going to catch you in my next tutorial in its continuation part that is second part of model attribute annotation.